We are back with Dr. Joseph D'Souza, a warrior in the fight against slavery, trafficking, and violence against religious minorities in India. I'm so glad that you are here. And you know, I read your book, Dalit Freedom Now and Forever, on my first flight to India when I was going to report on persecution against minorities. And it was amazing helping me understand what was happening there. You actually have a theory in that book saying that the rising persecution, specifically against Christians, has to do with overturning 3,000 years of slavery. What is that theory? The, uh, the theory still holds. You see, the, the modern Indian church, which is Indian, not controlled by the Westerner or the foreigner, American or British or whatever, uh, has come to terms with fundamental teaching of the Bible. Number one, that we are created in God's image. And our God is a God of justice. Mm. And a conscientized church has called out caste system within the church and has been calling out caste outside of the church. And so when you call out caste, you're going to look at the Dalits, the tribals, the backward caste and saying, hey, what's going on here? What, what kind of slavery is being imposed here? Uh, definition being different, not exactly the kind of slavery that you had in America or in South Africa, but it's a form of slavery. It's a form of discrimination of the worst kind. Uh, why keep people oppressed and exploited. And so the call has been, this is the generation that needs to deal. And there is no future really long term for Indian nation as a whole. And even the prime minister, whether it's this prime minister Modi or even the previous prime minister who went public says, you know, this is worse than apartheid. Mm. It has to go. So I keep on saying caste system has to go from India. And unless we deal with that main issue, and, and that is all linked with how you look at another human being. Uh, you think the other human being is less than you? Uh, the Bible teaches me that we are all made in the image of God, and God loves us the same, and Jesus loves us the same. And so this part of our speaking out and talking and doing something for these people, and especially the women uh, who are twice oppressed, Mm. Uh, sold into sexual slavery, um, ritualized prostitution, primary victims of trafficking. It's horrendous. I mean, a lot of the rape stories that have gone global press, there is a subtext there is, you hear all these big stories, whether it was the Delhi nearby horrible death, uh, uh, you know, of rape of that girl, India's daughter and all. But the subtext is, Lot, lot of women are getting raped and harassed and you know abused from the marginalized caste. And I have been saying this Me Too movement that's going on around here, where first time people are speaking, will be incomplete if it does not, if the women of the world do not include the plight of the Dalit women. It will be totally incomplete because there's not been a group of women all over South Asia who have been sexually as abused as the Dalit woman. And you know, the, the Dalits, of course, are even, they're so, they're considered to be so low in the caste system that they're outside of caste, they're at the very bottom. And so you, you see people get exploited that way. They're, they're expected to do so many things for free, which is why we call it slavery in a sense. Um, you actually are trying to change that through education. You see that as the future. Why is ch educating children part of that change? Because caste, Slave, uh, slavery or casteism or racism eventually is a thing of the mind. And the Dalits themselves recognize and they tell me, once you're at a certain age, 11, 12, 13, 14, they tell us it's over because in our head we think we are an untouchable, we are less than a human being. So they take, take our kids, make sure that in their heads they don't think they're less than other human beings. Mm. Teach them that they're made in the image of God. Teach them they are equal. And, and for the future of the Dalit people, education, but also an empowered education. You see, India has a double standard in education. The elite all go and send their children to English medium schools. The Dalits have never had access to those schools. Mm. So when they came and said, why, you know, the church also has failed us because your schools also cater to the elite. Why don't you do schools? Uh, no proselytization, no problem but they can be Christian schools, but take our kids and, and let their minds change and let them grow up thinking, hey, I'm a human being, as human as anybody else. And I can do whatever I want to do. And, and it's I so can empowering. hope and dream, yeah. Yeah, so you brought a video about the work you're doing. I'm so, it's a beautiful video. Take a look at this. Why, why 
make you want to be. When you grow up, when you become big, after your studies, teacher, she wants to be a teacher. Hundred and four schools across India, twenty-seven thousand children. Yes. You want to get up to fifty thousand. You are literally changing that whole generation to say, you know, we can have a future that's totally different than our parents. It's so exciting. If people want to find out more, you have a special offer for them today. Yes, my my book has been revised, and it's a shorter book, and I want to offer any of our viewers to get a free copy and just go on our website. Awesome, that is Dalit Freedom Now and Forever. If you want a copy of that, you can go to dalitfreedom.ca and that book was life-changing for me. I would highly recommend it. Dr. Joseph D'Souza, such a pleasure to visit with you again and we are cheering you on for the work you are doing for the lowest of the low who are equal in God's sight in India. Amen. We'll be right back. <laughs>